people are saying you have to re-sign James Harden. Because if you don't, it sends a message to stars. Hey, you made him a promise. Okay. So I went out this morning and, um, and on the staff, and I asked the staff, go look at the last five or six NBA champions. Did any of them have a terrible contract? No. Now, Dallas has one. Uh, DeVee's uh, Burton's $16 million a year. Uh, he doesn't play much. It's not a Westbrook contract. It's not a John Wall contract. If you signed James Harden, it would be the worst contract in the league. You're out of the championship window. You don't have to be perfect to be an NBA champ, but you got to have some bench and you got to be a little flexible at the trade deadline. You got to have flexibility to fix your flaws. You sign hard and you can't. And I hear this all the time. What kind of message will it send to NBA stars if you don't re sign Harden? <laughs> they want their money. Like you'd call up an NBA star and say, We'll give you 170 million. You know, I can't because, you know, you promised Harden. Harden's a dog. He doesn't play defense. He quits on teams. He showed up fat in Houston. <laughs> I mean, I'm, that's documented. Players don't look at Harden and go, Man, they really screwed over a good guy. They really, they really took advantage of Victor Oladipo or, or Jimmy Butler or Bam out of Bayou. That, 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 that's different. Harden, Simmons, Kyrie, you get what you get. They're selfish. They're divas. They're difficult. They quit on teams. They won't get vaxxed. Whatevs. Philadelphia has an advantage here. Harden was so bad at the end of this series. Number one, Daryl Morey can get saved by his owner. His owner goes out publicly and says, I overruled Morey. We're not signing him. Daryl's off the hook. Daryl can talk to free agents and go, yeah, I wanted to sign him, but uh, you know, the owner, <laughs> crazy guy upstairs, said no. Secondly, fans and media in Philadelphia, very punitive, very loud, will side with a team. Nobody wants Harden back. Nobody wants him back. And the other advantage, other stars want to take care of their families. They don't care. I mean, in a perfect world, you would go to a company that treats everybody well. Tell me an NBA star that's going to be offered $150 million that's going to go, you know, I would have, but four years ago, I didn't like the way you treated Harden. It really, it really rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not going to accept the, the money from a good team. I'm going to go to a clap, crappy team and get less money. People don't think that way. Stars do not think that way. The kind of money that would be offered by Philadelphia is star money. They don't care about Harden. Harden sometimes doesn't care about getting home before a game. He doesn't play defense. He's quit on teams. He comes in out of shape. That's why he dies at the end of a playoff series. So Philadelphia cannot sign Harden. Let him opt in for one year. If you signed Harden, look at, look at these numbers. It's over. It's over. I like that they won the trade. And I still think at least their guy played. Harden played. But you can't sign him. Let him opt in for a year, and then at the trading deadline, move him. And if he doesn't want to show up and he's, he wants to pout, good. But I'm sorry. I think the core four is very, very good for Philadelphia. Embiid's 29 a game star, MVP level guy. Maxi is an ascending star. I can get 22 a night from him. Tobias Harris is a three or a four. Go get a Spencer Dinwiddie. Go get a really good player. Thibel's a great defensive player. If we have another pandemic, I'd prefer he get vaxxed. But the point being is, I like your core four. I like where Philadelphia is at. But you sign Harden, you're out of the championship window. And by the way, you're not with Thibel and Maxi and Embiid and Tobias Harris. No, you're not. Because now you can go get what Miami has if you don't sign him long term. A bench. A legitimate backup center if Embiid gets banged up, which he is prone to do. It's kind of a perpetual issue. But go back and look at the great championship teams in the last five, ten years. Not a lot of terrible contracts. Because you have one, no bench, no flexibility, and championship teams need both. All right. I got good stuff today. We're just, you know, I go for, uh, I go for a couple days off. And I got all this stuff stored up. And I'm sitting around drinking wine and eating pizza and coming up with rants in my head. It's got to go somewhere. Ever been last in line for a hot shower in a full house? Yeah, you know the pain getting in the shower. Maybe it was high school. Maybe it's at home. Maybe it's got a lot of kids. It's lukewarm or it's ice cold. Either way, our friends at Navian Tankless Water Heaters putting an end to hot water problems. 
Yeah. Spa like comfort, endless hot water. They only heat it when you need it so it never runs out. Imagine lower energy bills. Imagine a 15 year limited warranty. Increase your comfort and decrease your carbon footprint. Never been a better time to go tankless. Right now, you can save hundreds too on a new Navian tankless water heater with local rebates. Go to tanklessmadesimple.com, tanklessmadesimple.com. Check out Navian, all the hot water you need when you need it, long as you need it, because they only heat it when you need it. They're leaders in green technology as well. Increase your comfort, decrease that carbon footprint. Navian. The Herdline News. Well, you just mentioned the Warriors. They bounced back from, I don't know if it's appropriate to call it a blowout loss. It was a disaster of a game hey, listen, in th- game five. That, that was a fun series. It really was. The new kids on the block and the old guys hanging on. It was a fun series. It really was. And it had a lot. And that, that game five, uh, outside of it being one of the worst watches in NBA history for anyone who wasn't a Grizzlies fan, uh, was was pretty remarkable. A team that wasn't a, a team that had won multiple championships. I don't know if they would have gone on to win the series after right. a loss like that. <laughs> um, and they did that without job, which is was so impressive from the Grizzlies. But they did get the win. Clay Thompson led uh, scoring for his team, knocking down eight three-pointers, 30 total points. And Steph Curry had 29, 11 of them coming in the fourth quarter. So they eliminated the Grizzlies four games to two and will host the Mavs for game one on Wednesday. This was an incredible series. It's obviously disappointing not to have jaw for the end of the series. I think it it might have gone seven. Um, And and even though it didn't, I I think obviously what you saw in this series was a young, fast, exciting, well-coached team that is on the rise in the Grizzlies. Yeah, they draft well. Like Memphis has got it going. Like this is this is not just jaw. This is like a really good scouting department. Like. They draft well, develop well. They this they're not going they're not going anywhere. Their GM won executive of the year. <laughs> Their coach is yeah uh, is is right there at the top for for coach of the year. Fans and are crazy. It's a wild environment. It's it's a it's a great overall situation for yes. Memphis right now. I don't think there's anything uh, to hang your head about. This is a championship team. They have the experience. They're able to overcome. They yeah. don't get scared when they get down. You can't. This is in the history of the NBA. You do not win that series if you're Memphis. You the bubble. Take the bubble year out. The, when the young teams won. Remember the bubble year was we, you and I were like, why are the young teams beating the old teams? Take that year out. Memphis never beats Golden State in this kind of... The kid never beats the old guy that still has a punch left. No, this was a great series. Yeah. And, and again, like they lost jaw. And, and that's an almost impossible thing yeah. to overcome. Like we, Obviously, they were a great team during the regular season. Without jaw, they went, went 20-5. and five. Postseason is a different situation. You saw it for one game. They blew Golden State out. And then in the games at the end of the series, Golden State did what they do. So... I think it's really exciting for Golden State, too. Like, they are playing a different type of basketball because they missed the postseason for a few years. They kind of had that downturn. If they win a championship again this year, they they it's, have it's an, it's an official dynasty. They can throw Draymond for 15 minutes a half at Luka and uh, Jonathan Kuminga, 6'7", 220, super athletic. Throw him for about six minutes a half. Wiggins a little bit. They Phoenix doesn't really have any mat. You know, Chris Paul can't guard him. Booker can't guard him. Mikhail Bridges can try, but Luca's thicker. I think Golden State has people that can throw at Luca and just just get him down to shoot forty six percent average. 29 and a half, not thirty two and a half. Just make it a little more difficult. Well, even outside of Luca, and you saw it because despite how badly things ended for Phoenix, let's not forget it was a seven game series. Dallas had their nights where they did not show up. You're going to have to live with Luka at some point. Is it? It's going to depend on the role players with Dallas because yeah. they're going to game plan for Luka, and Luka's going to get his buckets regardless. Yeah. Everyone else is going to have to step up. And if they are they going to be able to do that consistently against a team in Golden State that has won championships that knows how to overcome? Yeah. They're a very well matched up team. I think it will go. I think it'll go long. I think yeah. it'll be a long series, but that's going to be the question in that series. Well, Doc Rivers had some questions about whether he was in the hot seat already in Philadelphia, but apparently he won't have to worry about his future. Daryl Morey made it clear during exit interviews that Doc will return for a third season with this team. Morey said he loves working with Doc and that the organization believes he's a good coach and they have a strong chance to win a title with him. He was, uh, I don't know if you heard any quotes yeah, no, from I did. Doc. Yeah, he, he was very spicy. He did not really take any <laughs> arrows at the end of this, this series, which... Look, I, I, I don't think that Doc doesn't work hard. That's not the question that I have with Doc Rivers. It's, you know, he was kind of implying that 
you know the the writers and reporters were saying he, he doesn't care or like he's not he's not doing his best work or something like that that's that's not the concern here the concern is the Sixers haven't reached a conference final since 2001 they've got really good players you have two hall of famers on your roster banged up or not at this point i can't we can't discuss injuries everyone's dealing with injuries everyone and i i don't want to lay this at the feet of joel Embiid, who had an mvp level season and was dragging up up and down the court giving everything he had one thing about joel Embiid that i don't question is whether he cares about winning yeah. that dude cares james harden fell apart once again he is not a postseason player he is a all-time great scorer and and a, and a regular season player he does not have any success in the postseason that was on James Harden. You brought in James Harden to do that, and he gave you nothing in clutch time. I mean, literally nothing. Nothing in that game in clutch time. You could not rely on him in any capacity, not for scoring, not for playmaking, for anything. So I don't know what the Sixers are going to do. They may end up having to keep Harden. But... Oh, I've got strong opinions on that. That That, that is, uh, in fact, well, I'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll he, get into that. He was I, he was not 